So in this video, I'll be talking about the sin packet. Now, you may be thinking, why do an entire video on the sin packet? Well, the sin packet sets, a, sets the groundwork for the entire TCP session. The sin packet has some defining characteristics that, that really present the capabilities of each side of the connection. And let's take a look. Okay, so what I've done here is I created, well, I just set up a netcat listener on Mindbender. So I'll open up a terminal and I'll just netcat. Okay, netcat. Mindbender, what port did I use? One, two, three, four. But before I'll do that, set up a Wireshark, set a capture filter. So I should be able to capture a nice clean three-way handshake. There we go. So that's that. I got myself a three-way handshake. A cool way to do it is with, um, and you don't, is, is with Netcat because it, it, you'll just get nothing but what you're looking for. Okay, so now SIN packet. Let's take a look. So I, the client is Destro, server is Mindbender. So the initial SIN packet coming from the client. So th if you ever want to know, say you, you're given a capture and you're said, and you're told make sense of this. Okay, so you will always know that the, the SIN packet, the straight up SIN packet will always come from the client. So if this was an IP address of an unknown host and this was an IP address of an un unknown host, but you capture the three-way handshake, um, you'll know that the SIN packet is coming from the client and the destination is the server. So taking a look at this guy, what are its de defining characteristics? So look at the TCP header. First thing is we notice the sequence number. The, this is what's known as the initial sequence number. Okay, that's the first, that's the, the starting point, the zero point. Okay, I'm going to be doing an entire video on the initial sequence number. Um, but yeah, that's the starting point. So when, you, when I pressed enter, TCP cr created its SIN packet, it, 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 it created the ephemeral port, which is right here, and it created the initial sequence number. I'll also be doing a, an entire video on the ephemeral port right here, but um, that is generated at the moment that I hit enter. Now also, the acknowledgement number is zero. And now I, this is not zero because I have relative sequence numbers on. This is zero because the initial SIN packet coming from the client has no possible way that it could be acknowledging data. So it is always going to be zero. Now, if you see any number other than zero, Wireshark will notice it right away and put a big green stripe through it and it will say error error because that should never ever happen and if it does happen either something some kind of device is munching up your 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 sin packets or most likely somebody's using raw sockets and they're creating falsy sin packets fake sin packets so like hping3 um will by default put an acknowledgement number in there it will generate it and so Wireshark it recognizes that right away because that was she'll always always be zero so of course the sin flag is set now notice what is not set the ACK bit now this is the only the only TCP segment that will not have the ACK bit set is the initial sin because once again there's no possible way it's going to be acknowledging data so it does not have the ACK bit set if that bit is set there's something weird going on um, or you might not be looking at the initial SIN packet. So, okay. Now, looking further down the header, we have options. Now, I don't want to dig too deep into the options, but in the SIN packet, there are three options in particular um, that date all the way back to the early 90s. RFC 1323 is going to have de ha defined um, these options for 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 high speed data transfer. So these options well are optional. They are not necessarily required as of RFC 793. So the TCP session could establish without these options, but every modern implementation in the last 30 years is going to have these. Um, if not more. Now, the reason I show these, I'm showing these options in the SIN packet is because these MSS, selective acknowledgement, and Windows scaling, these three are the are the old school guys, and they are um, exclusive to the SIN packet. You you're not going to see these. So what the SIN packet is doing is advertising to the other side that these options uh, are th that that my side of the connection is capable of these options. So if, say, selective acknowledgement wasn't here, 
on the response from the server, it also wouldn't be there. Each side has to support the options. Now the values of the options can be different, but each side has to actually support them. So maximum segment size. Okay. Now I could probably do an entire video on MSS, but what MSS is, is the amount of data is the maximum amount of data payload that could exist in any packet. Okay. And in my case, I really common, you're going to see 1460, but in other conditions like VPNs, you're not going to see them. You, you might get different numbers, not a big deal. Just know also that MSS has a default value. So if this, this MSS option is missing, well, probably you're under attack, but if it is missing under legitimate conditions, um, the default value of 536, I think, is going to be applied. So, okay, so that's MSS, Selective Acknowledgement, deals with loss recovery, and then window scaling deals with bulk transfer um, and the ability to, to really saturate the path. So these are crucial. Well, MSS, not so much, but Selective Acknowledgement and window scaling are so important. These are what gives us modern broadband. Like you're watching this because of these options. No, maybe T, yeah, maybe YouTube uses UDP. Uh, I don't know. But okay, say say YouTube uses TCP like Netflix does. Um, the only thing that makes this possible, you to be able to view a high definition video is because of these two things. And fast loss recovery is huge. Window scaling is huge. I'm going to go into this later on, but just know that these options are basically bolt on performance, like, like putting a blower on your car. It can, it is dramatically improving performance and modernizing performance. And now the geniuses that created TCP knew that this kind that, that the original implementation was not good enough to be future proofed. So that's why options are put in. So, okay, enough about that. Now let's look at the response. Now, the response from the server is also a SYN packet, but it has some additional stuff. Now, the server, oh, well, let's click back on here. The server does not have to generate an ephemeral port because that's already been established. It, the source port is gonna be the listening port. Each side of the connection needs to have its own stuff, it needs to have its own ports, its own options, its own sequence numbers. So. It's going to generate its own initial sequence number, but it's going to be pulling double duty and the ACK, ACK bit is set. Now this acknowledgement number, let's say it ends in uh, nine zero. Check this out. This, the SYN packet coming from the client ends in eight nine. The SYN packet has a value of one byte and that it has a value of one byte specifically to give the SYN ACK something to uh something to bite onto something to acknowledge so this is kind of a ghost bit so most of the time in tcp acknowledgements um i'm sorry sequence numbers represent data payload so data that's being traversed this is the only circumstance where, well not the only one the fin packets do the same thing but it, this this is one of the only circumstances where a sequence number will advance without there actually being data now so that's what we have here. So it ends in eight nine. It's con the the initial sin packet is it has the value of one sequence number. The act number is nine zero. Now we see this exact same behavior since Mindbender the server is generating essentially a sin packet. It's just pulling double duty and also acknowledging at the same time. So the the sin act is going to have options. It's going to define its options exactly like the initial sin did. The only difference between the two is the listening, the ports, and it's going to be acknowledging data. And of course, what we have here, vendor's initial sin packet is 23. So the final acknowledgement in the three-way handshake is going to be 24 because the sin packet in the sin act also is has a value of one, and that's to give the third in the three-way handshake something to bite on um you know what i think that's actually it i think that that should do it for the sin packet now just remember that the sin packet is is, is doing it's this is the first measurement of delay now tcp is constantly um measuring delay but these two right here 
the response from the server, and then the actually these three, never mind, these these three packets are each side measuring delay, and that's setting up, that's laying the foundation for the upcoming connection because delay measurements are crucial in bulk transfers in and in, in setting up retransmission timeouts and t and window scaling um now okay so i think that is it on the sin packet so that should do it thanks for watching hope you learned something bye